there are a number of different reasons to use deliberate cold exposure. I want to separate those out for you. Your mental state is shifted when you are exposed to certain forms of cold. And many people use deliberate cold exposure specifically so that they can better cope with stress in real life. If you are using deliberate cold exposure, the environment that you place yourself into should place your mind into a state of, whoa, I would really like to get out of this environment, but I can stay in safely. Cold water immersion up to the neck with your feet and hands submerged also is going to be the most effective. Second best would be cold shower. Third best would be to go outside with a minimum amount of clothing, but of course, clothing that is culturally appropriate that would allow you to experience cold to the point where you would almost want to shiver or start shivering. We can learn to maintain mental clarity. We can learn to maintain calm while our body is in a state of stress. And that can be immensely useful when encountering stressors in other parts of life. As you develop the ability to stay in cold temperatures for longer and longer periods of time, you will become more resilient. You are basically getting better at controlling your behavior when your brain and body are flooded with norepinephrine and epinephrine. Another very common question is how often to do deliberate cold exposure. It's tough to make a recommendation on that based on any peer-reviewed study, although there are a few in humans that point to a threshold of 11 minutes total per week divided into two or four sessions of two or three minutes or so. Deliberate cold exposure has a very powerful effect on the release of dopamine in our brain and body. And this is one of the main reasons why people continue to do deliberate cold exposure. Basically, it makes us feel good and it continues to make us feel good even after we get out of the cold environment. In fact, some people would say they don't feel good in the cold environment. It's all stress for them, but afterwards they feel great. One of our previous guests, Dr. Anna Lemke, who's a medical doctor at Stanford University School of Medicine, she's a close colleague of mine, that one of her patients helped themselves get and stay sober off drugs by using deliberate cold exposure to increase dopamine. So a healthier form of dopamine release than they were engaged in prior to getting sober. But most stressors do not increase dopamine. They only increase norepinephrine and epinephrine. But deliberate cold exposure seems to cause a dramatic increase in dopamine. And this has actually been substantiated in a really beautiful study entitled Human Physiological Responses to Immersion into Water of Different Temperatures. They took people and they had them sit in chairs under water, but their head was out and they were, so they were immersed up to the neck, either of three different temperatures, 32 degrees Celsius, which is 89 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, which is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, or 14 degrees Celsius, which is 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So not super cold, but then what they did is they measured people's core body temperature throughout. They measured their metabolism and they looked at serum levels of things like norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine, and cortisol. Serum meaning within the blood. First of all, all the groups were in the water of a given temperature for one hour, which is much longer than most of the deliberate cold exposure protocols that anyone is using at home. The group that was immersed up to the neck in 32 degrees Celsius, that is 89 degrees Fahrenheit, water did not experience a shift in metabolism, nor a significant increase in dopamine, norepinephrine, or these other catecholamines. The group that was in 20 degrees Celsius, meaning 68 degree Fahrenheit, experienced a 93% increase in metabolic rate, which is remarkable given that the water wasn't that cold and yet an hour is a pretty long time to be in there. The group that was at 14 degrees Celsius, meaning 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit water for an hour, experienced a 350% increase in metabolism. The plasma or serum levels of norepinephrine in the blood increased 530%. These are huge increases in norepinephrine. The subjects also experienced a 250% increase in dopamine concentrations. And what was interesting is that those increases in dopamine persisted for a very long period of time afterwards even out to two hours. Nonetheless, these increases in norepinephrine are huge and long lasting. And these increases in dopamine are very large and long lasting. And I do believe that these documented effects in humans explain much of the enhancement of attention and of feelings of well-being and mood that people typically experience after doing deliberate cold exposure. Increases in dopamine of the sort evoked by deliberate cold exposure are actually very similar to the kinds of increases in dopamine that are elicited by things like nicotine. Only do deliberate cold exposure if you are prepared to be fairly alert for the next one to four or maybe even six hours following that deliberate cold exposure.